So, who knows who is this guy by raise of hand? Ryan. Ryan, right. So, uh, since not everybody knew that when I dry run this lecture, so this is the inventor of Node.js. Um, it happened a long time ago. And when he first presented Node at uh, 2011 on his lecture, Introduction to Node.js, Ryan said, Node is a single threaded type sort of a system, which was misunderstood and caused a lot of, peop oh, a lot of people to think that Node is a single threaded process. Now look at the, wow, it's working, yay. So look at the amazing GIF that I created. On the same lecture, he also said it's called Node because you have this simple building block and to scale up, these nodes will have to know how to talk to each other, just like Autobots. <laughs> so hi, as Nitsan said, I am Nirit Segal and I'm a front-end tech lead in AppsFlyer. Uh, and today I'm going to talk about the worker threads module, if you've heard of, and how it differs from the child process module. Suddenly I'm closer to the microphone and I hear myself twice. So like most of you, I've heard about the worker threads module and got curious, just like curious George. And after doing some exploration, I have to say that the announcement of the worker threads kind of reminds me of another announcement. Now, how many people here are actually full stackers or had a chance to work with React? Okay, so I'm having a good reference, yay. So it reminds me of the announcement of React Context API. If you recall, it always existed. It's been around for a while. It is used in the main app or the main module. And now we finally get, get um, direct access to it. Uh, well, so does threads in Node.js. They always existed, but were only used by LibUV and the engine. And since Node 12, they are finally stab stable and available to us using the worker threads model. So yes, we are going to discuss multi-threading in Node.js. I just didn't want to put it directly in the title because everybody does that lately. Um, talking about multi-threading in Node can be scary. You can see Aladdin and Abu. They share the same fear and confusion as I felt when someone talked to me about it. Um, so instead, I decided to call it, this is just a POC. And so we're gonna prove these concepts of, um, of the worker threads and child processes together. Well, here is Node. And we all know she's good for managing I.O. asynchronous tasks, but doesn't really shine when talking about CPU bound or long synchronous tasks. And until recently, if we wanted to parallelize these tasks, we would run either another, road, another node process by um, creating another machine or by using the child process module. Well, there is a reason why it is called a child process and not a child thread. A process is a program in execution. It is a memory and time share in the CPU allocated by the operating system and has one or more threads executing it. So a thread is the executor of the program or the instruction, which is basically the code that we write. However, in Node.js, we have some additional specification when talking about the um, node process and its threads. But today, I'm going to talk about child process and worker threads and not the uh, Unix or the machine threads and processes. And I'm going to list the key features of those two, run some code to validate their behavior on my own machine, and conduct a few rule of thumb just to know when to use which. Now, I have this habit, I can barely read, and now I have this habit of comparing stuff before I buy them or use them. For those of you who read Hebrew, there is a comparison chart here, um, like 
we have a, a column form, is it, in, is it spacey enough? And it says, well, yes, we can take grammar with us. No, we cannot take grammar. Anyway, so just like recently, um, my husband and I have been looking to buy a new car because the family is growing. And, yay! And of course, and of course, I made a comparison chart to help my husband select the car I wanted in the first place. And since child process and worker threads doesn't have their own icons yet, and I really think they should, it will be much easier to create lectures about them. So I've decided to use the final two cars we're currently looking to buy. So please welcome Hyundai Ionic, which will represent the child processes, and Skoda Enyaq, which will represent the worker threads. Well, I know those two aren't very popular. A friend of mine told me that. So instead, I decided to use that beautiful Tesla X. Yay! I heard some people talking about it in the, in the corridor, so you were right, though. And the mysterious Lucid X. Lucid Air, sorry. No, this is how much I'm good with cars. So, um, yes, I know they are different. In fact, when I discussed this lecture with my friend Tamar Twina, she said um, there's no reason, it's unreasonable to compare those two, and it's just like comparing a fish and a dog. Well, I said, well, both of them have tails, so I kind of can't compare those two. Um, and so does uh, the child process and the worker thread. They do share some features. They both run on the V8 engine, and they both use their communication channel for communicating with their parent process, and both have their own event loop. So how do they differ from one another? Well, the child process actually creates a new node process, while the worker thread creates a new thread running on the same node process. And although both are using the V8 as an engine, child process run on a V8 I the, the click of the camera. Okay, run on the V8 instance while the worker thread run using the V8 isolate module. And while a child process uses the inter-process communication channel, yeah, I managed to say that, which is the IPC channel, the workers uses the messages channel, which is an interface for the channel messaging API, just like we use in the, in the browser with workers. And last but not least, Using child process, we have no way for sharing state between the processes. While with the workers, we can use the shared array buffer for sharing memory. So, another habit I have is to prove concepts to myself so I can fully understand them. And while calculating the Fibonacci numbers is super exciting, it is really exciting, I decided to use some real life example to demonstrate CPU and memory usage on my machine with those two models. So have you heard of, used, or implemented visual regression tests in your projects? Yeah. Yay, good for you, great developers. So let's explain what it is for those who didn't raise the hand, which is the majority, shame. Uh, visual regression is basically comparing the uh, visual state of two images that are expected to be identical. We use these tests to validate that our components or pages hasn't changed, hasn't changed by code or by accident. Usually when we're implementing visual regression tests in Node using the JestLib, we actually use the pixel match lib under the hood, um, which basically compares the two buffers of the images, um, pixel by pixel. So we're going to move on to some code examples and see how the behaviors of those two mod models affects my machine. And it may require some help because I'm going to talk and then we want to move to the um, IDE. Hopefully it will work. I don't know how, by the way, Itai. Um, first, <laughs> Um, you can stand here. <laughs> I'm so nice. Um, first, we're going to observe. Oh, wait, but not yet. Okay. So I'm going to talk. Okay. We're on time. Okay. But you're putting your head. Oh, okay. <laughs> first, we're going to observe the child process behavior. 
We will do that in three examples. The first example is the sync example. And the click didn't work. Here it is, right? Click, click, yay. Um, which will help us observe the CPU and memory over synchronous tasks. So in this example, I'm going to initiate a pool of workers. Um, basically, each worker is a forked child process, so this is the, the code. And each worker will read the two images synchronously. Um, and you can see how I use the FS uh, read sync uh, option. And then um, it will compare them using the pixel match. Again, an example of the code. Um, this is how it goes. We're basically moving the buffers of the images into the module to execute the comparison. And finally, it will synchronously write the different pixel into a new PNG file. So let's run some code examples. Huh? No, I don't care which screen. I just needed to show this screen. Like at me. Okay. Oh, wow. No, but not, now we can't go back. Professionalism. <laughs> Yay, okay. He thinks it's over, but then we need to go back to the slide. So just, you know, don't be so um, positive that your task is ended. So let's open the IDE and open the task uh, or the activity monitor in my Mac. So the first example is the child process example. I hope you remember what I said is going to happen. Uh, anyway, I'm going to run the example. Sync example. Yay. Yes. So it's now create, it has created the um, 16 workers of child processes. We can see at the, uh, in the output that it has some initiation time overhead. It took about 40 milliseconds just to initiate those workers. And we can also see in the activity monitor that it actually, as promised, created 16 new node processes. Now we can see that we can easily identify the, um, the main thread, which is this one, because it has the um, lowest memory usage because it basically does nothing. However, the main thread, as well as all the 16 child processes, they are all running with seven threads. So um, these are not the libuv thread pool as one would expect, because I'm not executing any asynchronous or a heavy CPU task that uses this thread pool. Um, and another thing we can see is that actually all the heavy lifting is um, offloaded into the child processes and that the main thread doesn't do anything special. Now let's move back to uh, the slide. I'm gonna just hide them and um, freestyle my uh, first lecture ever in front of an audience. So the second example is going to be the buffer example. And in this example, I want to check the communication uh, capabilities between the child process and, the, and their parent process. And remember, it's using the IPC channel. So again, I'm going to initiate a worker pool of 16 workers. And I'm going to asynchronously read the images by the main thread instead of the workers themselves. And then I want to, I'm going to try and pass the buffer of the images into the workers uh, from the parent process. And this is basically the code, line of code that shows that I'm passing the buffer itself and not the path of the images because it's currently read by the main thread. And then 
Again, we're going to synchronously write the resulted pixels into a new PNG file. So let's um, observe this example. And again, we see we have some initiation overhead, pretty similar to the previous one of creating those 16 threads. And we see a great difference on the activity monitor. We see we have 16 new uh, chart processes, all running seven threads with very low memory usage because they're currently still doing nothing. And we see that the main thread actually is now running 11 um, threads. And the reason for that is because it's now executing an asynchronous FS task, file system task, sorry. And it uses the uh, four default thread pool threads, workers of the libuv. Now, another significant thing that we can see here on the terminal is that the pixel match lib threw an error because it expected to get a buffer as an input, but it actually didn't get a buffer as an input because the IPC channel doesn't support um, passing data in, um, in such manner. So let's move on to the last example, which is the async example. In this example, we're going to see how the libuv thread pool behaves inside those child processes or inside those workers. Um, so again, going to initiate the worker pool. Um, it's nice that you're all still awake after lunch, and I really appreciate that. Um, and asynchronously going to read the images inside the workers themselves, then compare the images using the pink pixel match. This is going to happen synchronously still because it's a buffer against buffer. And then we're going to asynchronously write the different pixels into a new file. So let's run this one and just clear all this. Async example. Reading my tasks to myself. So again, initiation overhead. Sorry for repeating that. There's a point at the end, I promise. Now let's see uh, what's happening here. Well now, uh, first of all, yay, each worker is doing a work. Previ in the previous example, they didn't do anything because it basically didn't work. So each of them is doing work. We can see that each of them is now running 11 um, threads because they are using their own thread pool of libuv, while the main thread, which doesn't do anything asynchronous, doesn't use them and still runs with those seven uh, threads. So we can exit that example and summarize what we have experienced. So we saw that it actually created 16 new node processes. And we saw that we constantly had initiation overhead. Small as it was, it is still something that should be taken into consideration, and especially sh since we saw that the timing is unexpected. It changed between each run. And we, can see that we could see that the communication channel, the IPC channel, was very limited. It didn't allow us to, to share buffer between the processes because there are different processes. And it also used the JSON um, serialization method. And even if I used the advanced method, it still wouldn't work. And finally, we saw that each process had its own thread pool and could leverage that, leverage it for its own asynchronous tasks. Moving on to the worker threads. So again, the sync example, the first example, I'm gonna test the CPU and memory. I'm gonna create a thread, a worker, a worker pool of 16 workers, but this time they're gonna be worker threads workers that are gonna run the worker script. And each worker is going to read synchronously, then compare synchronously, and then write synchronously. So let's run that. And look over the um, activity monitor. So here too, we have some initiation overhead, but it's smaller. On the first example, we saw that we had almost, we had over 40 
millisecond of initiation overhead and it's almost twice as fast. We can also see that, as promised, the worker threads created threads on the main process. It didn't create additional process to run those threads. We can see, I hope we can see, that we have 23 threads running on that main process, where the first seven are the default seven threads we saw in the previous examples, and the additional 16 threads created by the worker threads. We can also see that now the memory usage is much lower because I don't need all the overhead of creating a new node process. I'm still running on the same process. I don't need to duplicate any file, any dependencies, um, and it, uh, it affects it puts much less impact on my machine, and yet doing the same job. Now let's move on to the buffer example. Uh, just a recap, we want to pass the images buffer into the workers. So creating a 16 worker thread pool, the main process is going to read the images asynchronously, and then pass their buffers into the workers, which will compare compare the buffers synchronously, and then write them again synchronously into a new PNG file. So let's move and see if this time it's going to work. Now remember the previous example didn't work. Which of you think this one is going to work? Yeah. Yay, positive thinking, uh, the buffer example. Great. So first, just to uh, demonstrate the, how much unexpected is the initiation overhead, now I get 11 milliseconds, still much faster than the child process uh, initiation overhead. And now let's look at my main thread. So now it's using 27 threads instead of 23 because it's using the four threads of the thread pool of libuv associated to the main process. And we also see that the memory usage is very high because it's doing a lot of work to execute the transmission of the buffers between the workers and the parent. And last but not least, this is basically the lib that um, executes the task uh, that, I'm sorry, that uh, the task is writing the different pixels to it, and we see that it's actually working. So yes, it did succeed. Uh, the passing of the buffer did work, and we saw, and we can see that it, you can't see that, but it actually took much faster than all the previous examples. Um, I was, that, I was thinking of showing how the code ran and wait, but then I remember that I'm, again, after lunch, so I tried to just spare you all the tiny um, details. So the last example is the async example, which will examine the libuv behavior with the worker threads. Um, now, I want to say that I would like you to be in focus on that example, but I get your position, so let's try to keep it together. So created the worker thread pool, and this time each worker is going to, create, to read the images asynchronously, then compare them synchronously, and then write them asynchronously um, to the disk. And let's see how it's going to act this time. Let's wait a minute. Now, what happened here? We still get those seven, uh, 27 threads. We still get the seven default threads plus the 16 threads created by the worker threads and still the main process four threads of its own libuv, which means that although the worker threads do implement their own event loop, for example, it, that they doesn't implement all the features of libuv. They don't create their own thread pool to manage asynchronous tasks. They use the main thread or the main process thread pool to execute this, those tasks, which basically mean I didn't offload any task from my main process. Um, so that trial kind of failed. And we can stop it too. So let's move on to conclusion. We're at almost at the end. Ah, not conclusion, let's summarize. So we saw that it created 16 threads running on the same main process. We saw that we had initiation overhead, but it was much faster than the child processes. 
And we saw the message channel advantages. It did allow us to pass buffer between the parent and the children. Um, and just a recap, it can it also allow us to share memory if, we, if I had used the shared array buffer. I just didn't have an example for that. And we saw that it used the main process thread pool to execute heavy asynchronous tasks, uh, which is um, very disappointing, yet expected. So conclusion this time. Regarding the child process, well, when will I use in child process, and not everyone agree with that, I will use them uh, when I have small, small data to pass between the parent on the, on, and the child, or even if it's big data, um, I will use it um, if I have heavy I.O. or async tasks that I want to offload from my main process. When I will use the worker threads, it will be if I really want to pass structured data or share memory between um, the parent and the children. And I will use it if I have CPU consuming tasks, but I will not use it with tasks that requires the thread pool um, for uh, optimization. And last but not least, finally, I will always use the thread pool because we see that the initiation overhead is unexpected and we cannot afford ourselves to um, count on the worker to be ready on time uh, when we need it. So, thank you. Oh, I have one animation not working well. Never mind. So I want to thank Tamar Twina, which basically slayed my lecture and said that she doesn't understand why should I compare them. But she really did help me to focus on what I want to pass as an information. And I want to thank Matteo Colina, which bothered to uh, answer some questions I had that I didn't understand entirely from the official documentation. By the way, he's also a speaker in this conference. And I want to thank also Ryan Dahl because he actually went over the slides. I can't say that um, he dared to contribute because, you know, it's a very um, high-level presentation. It's, not, it's um, out of his league, but still he bothered to do the time. And really, the, the main... Um, the main conclusion is that great kudos to this uh, community of know that everybody is willing to help when help is re uh, requested. And finally, I want to thank Lady May, which not all of you know her, but she bothered to watch this presentation for like a hundred times and give me a lot of comments. And finally, I want to thank you guys for coming after lunch, choosing this hall, and staying awake. Thank you very much. Go, right?